All right. Welcome, everyone, to our July PL Andres All Hands. A um, lot of exciting things to share for the, the past month of amazing work in the Andres team. As usual, we'll start with our working group update, um, talking about some top level KPIs, highlights, and some team updates, um, do spotlights into some awesome things to highlight across the group. And then we have two deep dives, one on network version 17, which is the next Filecoin network upgrade that is in the works right now, and then a data dive um, from Steph on NetOps um, for kind of some of the new data pipelining work um, and tooling that's happening there. As usual, we're the PL Andres Working Group. We're part of the awesome Protocol Labs network where we drive breakthroughs in computing technology to push humanity forward. Um, we really are building the, the new primitives that we think are going to make the future breakthroughs of tomorrow, tomorrow built on top of a great foundation for kind of human agency, collaboration, resiliency, um, and growth. We work on a lot of really awesome projects, um, especially IPFS, LibP2P, and Filecoin, but also many of the other things here, like Test Ground, IPLV, multi formats, Proto School, DRAND, and more. Um, and so, definitely uh, part of these awesome open source communities um, and participate a lot in, in how we can help make them better. Our mission is to scale and unlock new opportunities for these protocols. Um, and we do that kind of in three main ways onboarding amazing new developers and contributors and uh, helping support them to attack major projects, um, driving breakthroughs in protocol utility and capability, and working a lot on the, the research and development um, and doing that across the PL network in a kind of network native way. These are our 12 different Endres working groups, and there's a lot of open roles across the PL Endres working group. If you are looking to get involved and you're say an engineering manager or a TPM or an infra engineer or a product manager, please do reach out to us. We are hiring and we also really love collaborating with many different people who wanna work on these technologies in a lot of different ways. Um, and so check out some of our, our open jobs here or use your QR code reader there. As a reminder, our strategy for 2022 on Endres has four main components. The first is growing the talent funnel of amazing developers, researchers, product managers who are uh, kind of attacking the open problem areas within this domain, um, working on uh, doing our, our kind of development and work in a very collaborative, open, transparent way that enables a whole network of teams pushing these projects forward, um, enabling robust storage and retrieval across IPFS and Filecoin um, so that we have lots of useful data being onboarded into the Filecoin network and also making sure that is accessible, retrievable, and building amazing applications and velocity um, on the IPFS side as well. Um, we also have some really awesome breakthroughs in programmability, scalability, and compute that are well underway, making really amazing progress, um, and that can kind of really level up these systems, unlock brand new capabilities, um, and, and help push these ecosystems forward. And of course, we do all of this work on the really great foundation of having our solid network operations, really good stable releases, um, really good testing infrastructure, really good monitoring, analytics, uptime, um, all of that infra, making sure that we run systems and projects and protocols that are highly reliable and robust. Um, and so those are our kind of four main strategy areas. Um, an update into the, the Filecoin roadmap. This is something that um, we've been sharing across the Filecoin ecosystem. There's a couple of new things to highlight in here. Um, I've added in Station, which we are going to hear about more um, later in the spotlight section, which is super cool. Actually, already, already has some repos out there that people can take a look at. Um, there's ceiling as a service that I don't think was here the last time we presented this slide, which is something that's being worked on across the SP working group team and the, the fill dev team on Lotus, um, helping enable um, much uh, more decoupled ceiling services within the Falcon network. There's moon landing, which actually kicked off, I think, last week, which is a new program specifically for helping storage providers really ramp up their data onboarding capabilities, um, introducing them to all of the tools and best practices. It really, really exciting progress and something that we should keep updating. If you see something missing in this roadmap, please let me know because there's probably, you know, we're running out of space, especially in data retrievability, but we'll make more space. There's more awesome things that we should be tracking and, and sharing more widely with the community. Um, so definitely something that we're participating in heavily. A reminder of our Q3 goals now color coded. We are well on track for our goals around hyperscaling the knowledgeable and aligned developers, improving the PL stack, making really good progress. Um, 
where we are almost at our number of hires into this working group, which is great. Um, and also really like far exceeding these goals when it comes to supporting a thriving community of participants in the PL stack. So well green on that one. Um, we're yellow on delivering robust, accessible storage and retrieval. Um, we are still hovering around one petabyte of, of fill plus data onboarded per day. Um, not, not yet at our five petabyte goal. So a lot more work to do there. Um, but we are well exceeding 1 million successful Falcon retrievals per day. I think uh, Saturn alone is doing something like 10 million per day. So that's really awesome um, and great to see that, that progress there. Um, launching network breakthroughs. Um, we have a lot of work happening here, but I think we still need to get more clarity into our roadmap to understand whether how on track we are for this. We don't yet have a FEM testnet or smart contracts deployed on that testnet. So we're not yet on track for that goal. Um, and we do not yet have a specific breakthrough that's targeted to start getting real world adoption in Q3. A couple have roadmaps that seem well on track for Q4, but wanna, wanna understand and get more visibility to that. And then we are doing, doing a great job on terms of having um, our critical systems running very smoothly, um, really good continued uptime, handling of security issues, and also um, supporting many new core protocol implementations, big, big snaps to the IPFS team on this, where there is now 21, I believe, different IPFS implementations listed in the IPFS documentations. And so huge, huge congratulations to, to the IPFS stewards here and the people who are maintaining Kubo um, and, and pushing on other IPFS implementations as well. Um, so that's where we are there. Um, and on that note, I'll pass it over to Adeen on IPFS. So uh, IPFS, uh, we are trying to make the web work peer to peer using content addressing. Here's some, some KPIs that we're tracking. The one that's most noticeable here is that our, our uh, our increase in outstanding PRs in the Go and uh, uh, GUI repos. Um, suspect this is mostly because uh, the both the, the IPFS uh, group working within Endres and uh, and others were stretched pretty thin around the IPFS thing event, uh, and also some other fun things going on like rename moving all of the docs websites and such from IPFS.io to IPFS.tech. Uh, and uh, renaming Kubo. Um, so we gotta keep keep that on track and get those down. Um, some updates. So there's the IPFS thing event. You'll hear more about that later today. Um, the IPFS specs repo has gotten a bunch of reinvestment. In it. We have a number of open IPIPs, which is the process we are using to, to shepherd and, and move along specs, uh, including a few from Cloudflare and Fission. Um, sort of as soon as we started reinvesting in specs, the community started at going back. So this is like a good place for us to be continuing our investment. Um, Kubo 0.14 was released, which was the first release actually named Kubo uh, with some fun things like delegated routing support. Uh, as I mentioned, the IPFS.io, all the things not the gateway have been moving towards IPFS.tech, which uh, protects them from things related to the gateways, which is good. And as Molly mentioned, we have an implementations landing page with lots more that we are hoping to to add going forward uh, and making space and really helping people understand how they can use different IPFS implementations instead of trying to make one thing do all of them. Um, and some things we have going on ahead are making uh, the specs process and IPIP more you know, easier for people to engage with and, and helping shepherd that along uh, and making the reframe API and uh, go bit swap uh, better um, and easier for people to work with. Awesome. Over to libp2p, I believe Max has a video for us, um, but libp2p is the modular networking stack of P2P protocols used by Web3, and we'll get a update from Max. Libp2p highlights. From the project side, we are growing the team. We have P3 joining as a technical project manager next week, and then we have JQ as a software engineer joining the week after. On the community side, um, we have steady interest in live to be community call. Very helpful to see people face to face every other week. And then we had our first Rust Live to be community call discussing nitty gritty details about Rust Live to be. Cross implementation efforts, we currently have two new transports in the working, WebRTC and Web Transport. They allow us from a browser to connect to a remote endpoint where we don't trust the TLS certificate of that remote endpoint. This is pretty much the majority of IPFS nodes, for example, out there today. WebRTC is in the specification phase on the libp2b specs repository, 
and this is driven by us and the community. And then also we have three implementations in progress of this specification in Rust, Go, and JavaScript. On the web transport side, this is still in progress uh, in the specification phase at the ITF. And really, really good. We have Martin in the ITF, and we have had Martin at the ITF meeting in Philadelphia last week. And then there is progress on the Go Quick and Go Little P web transport uh, implementation. Really cool. Then there is a new working group on Episub led by Viso. So anyone interested in Gossip Sub in general or Episub, please check that one out. Implementation specific, we have GoLibPP v021 released that enables, for example, on the resource manager side, for limits to scale based on the machine you're running on. Then also an allow list mechanism, which allows you to set certain nodes that can connect even though you reach the limit. And then Research Manager received a lot more metrics and uh, Grafana dashboard, so you can manage, uh, you can actually monitor all of it. On the Rust Libp2P side, V046, there's not really anything user facing, but there are large refactorings for the upcoming WebRTC and quick implementation in Rust. And last, um, Libp2P is a huge community, and it's not only protocol apps work. So I want to highlight Nim Libp2P today. Nim Libp2P, the team is really hardworking. And they merged the Yamex implementation, so you can now use Nim Libp2P with Yamex uh, next to Implex. And then also they're buying more and more into Libp2P's hole punching mechanism. So for example, they implemented Circuit Relay V2 and are currently implementing Autonet. Cool. That's all from my side. Thank you, Max. IPDX, Peter. So, so uh, IP developer experience here. Uh, we are trying to empower PL and Rust to do what they do best. Uh, through developer experience improvements. Uh, so last month, we've been to IPFS Think. Uh, we gave a talk there on how to configure GitHub as code. Uh, the video will be coming out shortly. Uh, we've also held uh, a lot of feedback on TestGround. So thank you for that. It was great to hear all the, all the user stories and we're definitely going to use that. Uh, new things happening in TestGround. Uh, we have Coley P2P cross version testing on every PR uh, out. And uh, there have been uh, plenty of stability improvements. So if you haven't checked out test grant in a while, it might be time to go back. Uh, Unify CI, uh, we automated adding uh, new projects to Unify CI. So now we detect every Go repository in across our PL owned orgs and propose adding Unify CI there. Uh, and we also made some improvements regarding uh, NPM uh, publishing from, from PL orgs. So if you're interested in that, do reach out. Uh, about next things coming up, uh, we have new things in GitHub management going out live this month, uh, mainly user, user actions, user defined actions that will help us uh, automate checks like all public repos should have their default branches protected. Uh, a lot more stuff coming out in test ground as well. We've uh, leap P2P interrupt testing in Rust and between Rust and Go. Uh, and a new release of Unified CI is coming out this month with Go 119 support. Awesome. And drop by their office hours if you want to get involved or have more questions. Over to Jennifer for Falcoin. Uh, if you don't know Falcoin, we are trying to build a crypto-powered decentralized storage network for most important humanity information. To build that, we are building a huge, maybe one of the biggest like uh, storage network in the planet right now. We are at 16.886 like XP bytes in raw po power, and that results see we push to the big AK except bytes in QAP for the network over the past months. So that's super exciting. A lot of the effort are coming from a lot of data onboarding uh, in the Falcoin deals, uh, which uh, we have 140 QBytes data. A lot of them are 100, like, a lot of them are verified data. Uh, I want to point out like the matrix we're showing here are all in raw back power. So there are exactly like 127 um, petabytes of like data that's are being stored uh, in the Falcon network um, via like verified deal. So that's super exciting. Uh, that thanks to a lot of like data programming that other teams are ecosystem are pursuing. So that's great. And we are storing a lot of use useful variable data set as you can see uh, 
on the graph and we are still like increasing on the daily data growth rate. It's not that stable, but you know, we're getting there. It's increasing. Some Filecoin highlights from the field that came, a lot of feature release, the optional release was 17.0 was out with a lot of like storage provider user experience re related features so that they can maintain their operations and service easier uh, while they provide service to the network. We have our very first release announcement video, which is linked in, in, in the site. Uh, feel free to check out on Lotus underscore web three over to their account. Uh, we are also working hard on the split store, uh, which is gonna be coming in the beta release code freeze next Tuesday. Um, split store is the same aim to ease the change in the storage, uh, data store management for all node operator using Lotus. As you know, the, the state and the chain size grows really fast of our coin network. So we want to make sure the operation there can be very easy so the node operators operators doesn't have to do a lot of maintenance for their node. Uh, Phil Crypto team is shipping a proof version V12 uh, in the next Lotus release. Also coming next week, uh, we are having some like major multi-core SDR improvement that will enable storage provider to better utilize their whole resources that and sitting on a full capacity. We have been testing this with storage provider in the past like two months already. We have been seeing great results and great feedbacks. So um, if you are watching this, I would highly recommend you to check this out if you are a storage provider. Uh, along with the other core devs, Crypto Net Lab, FVM, Team Forest, uh, Venus, and everywhere else, we are trying to figure out the network V17 upgrade scope plan. Uh, like we're planning on that. We're trying to define a couple of like high value, high impact FIPS to introduce in the next network upgrade so that we can uh, support um, the if VM programmability better later in this year. Uh, so the latest like technical sp scope can be found in the TPM GitHub repository as well. And there's a very active governance process going on with FIP36, which is like introducing a sector multiplier, duration multiplier. Uh, if you're interested in that, please take a look at that discussion. Uh, Another huge part of the Filecoin network, FVM, we are working on FVM milestone 2.1, which will enable user programmability on the Filecoin network. We are gonna start with FEVM, which is EVM on top of file, uh, on top of FVM. Uh, we are forming a leading by role. Uh, we are forming a FVM working group that covers like core engineering, product research, developer experience, network upgrades, all the collaboration and so on and so forth so that we can have the full you know, usability of the FEM upon the launch. Uh, we are doing a lot of like scope planning. We are doing design, spec, brainstorming and such. Uh, if you want to follow and participate uh, in, during the progress, join the public ABM channel. And yes, we're coming up with some OKRs we will be sharing with public, maybe in the next address, like all hands uh, next month. Coming up again, we are working on MV17. Uh, in Alex North will be giving us a deep dive on what's coming for Filecoin Network uh, later. And we are working on Split Store, as mentioned earlier. FVM 2.1 is another one. Sorry, there's a lot of overlapping here. Uh, Yusha and I are like syncing our thoughts. But also the other thing didn't mention there is uh, for Lotus Manor, we are supporting ecosystem team like Field Mind, Super Rational, like to hopefully enable sitting as a service for the whole storage provider community so that it, like more, more storage providers can join and onboarding uh, on the Filecoin that work easily, easier. <laughs> And also just like a shameless plug-in, we are doing our very first Lotus and Friend Day, uh, like a mini summit in Lisbon on November the 22nd. Uh, registration, registration will become uh, open very soon. So please stay tuned on that. Awesome, November the 2nd, you heard it here. Going on to our team updates, starting with NetOps, Jesse. Okay, um, NetOps update. Um, our, our KPI, our 95% percent high TTFB, is in a lot. It's a, a great um, improvement from the team. We will share a little bit more detail in the next slide. Um, but in the highlight, uh, we the TTFB dropped for the seven second, um, which is um, almost a five five second less than previous week. 
is a great improvement. Um, IPFS cluster picking up day um, still keep pretty pretty good <laughs> number, pretty high. Um, we try to make sure we can keep this kind of number uh, continue continue going on. We're hoping more and more uh, community partner will come in to help. So that means that the, we're hoping the number getting a little bit, but we are not hoping it jump dramatically. Um, the IPFS gateway request, uh, keeping pretty number, um, 800 million, uh, a week, uh, still keeping on pretty high, pretty good uh, progress. Uh, the unified IPFS gateway usage um, is a 6.4 million, oh, sorry, I should update this one. It's in fact, it is 9.1 million uh, user, increased a lot um, last week. Uh, we also looking into, is any user pattern get changed? And is it changing our site to make it better? Uh, but that may be also uh, one of the result because our TTF, uh, TTFP get increased. So that getting better. So we will look into more detailing here. Uh, this is an update from the on the ups. Yeah. So from the Sentinel side, um, we currently have the following ongoing projects: data modeling with DBT, um, and we have also deployed uh, data infrastructure as code. Uh, you can find it on protocol slash data infra. Um, and we are migrating from Redshift to BigQuery um, so that it would. Uh, so we will be doing less data warehousing uh, operations work and more actual data analysis work. Uh, in terms of hiring, David Gaskas has joined the team as a data engineer, and we are still looking for another data engineer or BI analyst to join the team. Um, since we have introduced uh, DBT as a da data modeling tool, we can now da do data modeling and transformations independent of Lily's data models. So if you have any feedback regarding da Lily's data models now, please feel free to reach out to us on Phil's handed on Slack. Um, there's uh, querying for chain data is also now simpler, especially if you need data all the way to Genesis on BigQuery. Um, just as a note, it's currently uh, still in uh, beta um, because we will be reprocessing the chain and I'll talk about this later in the deep dive. And you can also now deploy data pipelines onto Argo. It's language agnostic and Kubernetes native. It uses custom resource definitions. So you don't have to uh, yeah, learn Python to write data pipelines. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Awesome. Thank you. Get in contact with the team on Slack. Over to George for Bifrost. Yes. Hey, everyone. A few more uh, updates on the IPFS gateway. So I think the numbers on the previous slide were a bit outdated. We're actually hitting consistently over 1 billion total requests a week. We've been doing that for a few weeks now. And we're at 9 million unique users. Uh, so we've had to scale the gateway nodes quite a bit, and we've improved the uh, caching and load distribution across the nodes. Uh, the overall time to first byte P95 is uh, down to seven seconds for last week, and so far this week is 2.4 seconds. Uh, notably, five of the seven regions where we run uh, nodes are around one second for P, uh, P95 time to first byte. Um, Running Kubo uh, 014 on the IPFS gateway nodes with a, a new libpp resource manager and the Go routine patch from Steven. Thank you very much to uh, both Stephen and uh, Marco for helping out with uh, tweaking those. Uh, it has resulted in better performance and uh, uptime for Kubo nodes. Opportunities, uh, we are planning on deploying a load balancing layer part of the NFT cluster nodes with uh, um, that will allow us to more easily swap out nodes and test a new disk layout with ZFS. I uh, thank you to um, uh, Matthew Geddes for suggesting that. Uh, we also plan on spitting out the bad bits uh, blocking logic into its own service so that we can share it across uh, the cluster nodes as, as well as the gateways and maybe open it up to others at some point or at least share the code uh, for so that others can, can easily run this uh, blocking service. Also, we are streamlining the scaling out process by automating any new peers. There's still one manual process right now where we have to generate the, uh, the uh, peer IDs. So we're going to automate that. And we're also ramping up uh, tracing on the gateway Kubo nodes. Uh, this should help us identify uh, potential bottlenecks in the, uh, in the code. Awesome. Great progress. Um, and really amazing to see those improvements in TTFB numbers. Um, it's great to hear. Over to Michael for a Daghouse update. Hey, uh, yeah, it's a little light because everybody's out <laughs> on vacation, which is why I'm playing the role of David. Uh, yeah, so the numbers look good. Um, we shipped a lot of more IPFS, elastic IPFS stuff, sort of in and around um, IPFS things. 
we're very excited about it. So there's some new blog posts and um, we've started to do some of the early community engagement there. Um, we've also completely now um, turned it on in production. Um, we're not waiting on cluster anymore for responses to send to clients. And we're also turning it off. We're not sending data from Cloudflare workers to cluster anymore. We're actually only sending it over to Amazon and then from Amazon we send it to to cluster potentially for another backup. And we're looking at other backup solutions too, including putting it back in R3. The, the, the finances around what this costs is so roundabout and strange. But anyway, that, that, that little roundabout effort actually saved us like a third of our bill. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, so we, we don't depend on a cluster anymore. Our, our perk numbers are, are changing uh, pretty dramatically based on that. And we also have um, an open IPNS service going out called W3Name um, that anybody with signed IPNS records can use to host their records and put them in the network. Um, you don't even need to sign up for an account. Um, and some highlights, uh, Alan wrote this awesome tool called Dagula that everybody should check out. Um, if you want to move around DAGs point to point between different bit swap nodes, this is a point to point service. So it doesn't try to do all the peer connections and management for you. It's actually a programmable way for you to say, connect to these, these peers and just get this DAG. Um, yeah, yeah, it is a great name. Uh, and we've actually got that running in Cloudflare Workers a little bit now, um, and that's starting to give us some new superpowers in the network. So we're, we're pretty stoked on that. Um, and uh, just in, people will probably see some, some fallout from this, but we have a pretty dramatically increased threat of malware um, in our services this week. Uh, and we are responding pretty dramatically to that. So expect more news and, and more action from us over the coming weeks. And that's what we got. Awesome. Thanks for the updates. And definitely go check out all of the presentations from the IPFS thing. Um, Michael hosted an awesome track there that uh, had some really great presentations like this one. Over to Lauren for Bedrock. Hello, so Bedrock is laser focused on faster and reliable retrievals. Um, a part of that is we implemented HTTP peace retrieval to accelerate the Evergreen program to get more data onboarded faster, um, and then exploring SP retrieval uh, generally with that. And then uh, meanwhile, on the IPFS to Filecoin side, we have auto retrieve working, collecting metrics so we can analyze what are the bottlenecks, what's happening in the system. Uh, Indexer team is about to launch um, the updated CID contact, and the whole team is working on a cross-team collaboration to understand um, how we can improve retrieval generally for um, storage providers and for the IPFS side. Uh, some KPIs, we have 31 storage providers running Boost. Uh, we have four indexers running with 184 nodes sending announcements to those indexers and we've indexed about five bill, 6 billion CIDs. Um, opportunities going forward are diving into that auto retrieve data to understand what the bottlenecks are and fix them, and working on this uh, collaborative working group to improve the whole system. Awesome, great to have more cross-team collab on important retrieval. Retrieval is not something that one particular node owns, but as a whole system effect, so great to see that coming together. Over to Luca for CryptoNet update. Well, currently, CryptoNet is working on three main areas. The first one is um, Filecoin protocol improvement. And here we have storage market programmability and FVM standards that are two key efforts for a successful ecosystem of uh, FVM application. Uh, we have also several FIPs in flight and a proposal for uh, network version 17 that uh, Jennifer already mentioned and Alex will, uh, talk, will, will talk about deeper um, later on. Um, the second working area is on-chain storage products. Uh, basically, this effort is driven by the fact that we are convinced that we need basic on-chain primitives um, uh, for, for Falcon and for Web3. Retrieval pinning is one of them, is the one in the most advanced stage. There is a live version of Ethereum. I will give a, a really short demo after this slide. Basically, you can pin an IPFS hash and get retrieval guarantee via a network of referees. Um, we also had the storage metric DAO effort that was meant to collect the storage performance metrics in order to have like uh, reliable data on chain. Uh, this project, unfortunately, is currently on pause. There is a post-mortem doc which is linked in the slide uh, that you can read if you want to know why and, and when we got stuck. Um, and we also we are also designing uh, a new range of products that we kind of know by from talking with the community that people want. One is perpetual storage, one is like proving data in the clear, and another one is a way 
to use NFT storage straight from a smart contract. Um, the last work area that I want to mention is the research effort, the basic research effort that continues to be strong. We had four new papers on vector commitment and vector commitment, as maybe everybody knows, are a key uh, element for making our SNARK uh, smaller. On the top of that, we have uh, Testudo, which is a research effort in the SNARK land uh, that aims to reducing the proving cost of our proof of replication. As a final Mark, um, we ran a second version of the CryptoNet on tour uh, that we also did last year. Basically, we gather uh, problems and suggestions in, in the community. We collected all this information. We are building a graph. The effort is not uh, uh, completed yet, but if you want to um, help out, you are more than welcome to join. Uh, Medusa, which is one of the other um, projects we are working on as a demo, and Nicola will uh, we'll show it soon. And on the hiring side, we are actually hiring PMs, TPMs, and software engineers. So uh, just for you to know that these are the vacancies that you're most interested in. And if you go to the next slide, there is a, sh a short demo on the retrieval pinning services that I wanted to show you. On the client side, you can connect with MetaMask. You can see all the deals that you have active. You can um, download. Uh, the data uh, that is object of the deal. And uh, basically you can create a retrievability deal with a network of referees. Um, here there are you know, all the conditions that the network of the referees want you to be compliant with. And we have basically two modes. One is like the standard mode that selects a file, uh, creates a CAD, and then you can basically select some, some conditions uh, like the duration, like the um, the collateral and, and all these kind of, uh, of features. You have like a lot of uh, guidance um, with respect to that. And once you agree with the terms of the network, basically you can, you can start the retrieval deal. Um, in parallel, we have uh, an expert mode um, retrieval deal where you can basically play more freely with, with all the parameters. You can set, um, you, you can upload a file and you can set like the, the retrieval, the, um, all the parameters that define the contract. And on the top of that, you can also uh, basically select your own CID uh, if you have one. Um, what does the retrievability um, guarantee come from? Basically, we have a network of referees that um, if your file cannot be retrieved, uh, are basically in charge for uh, giving this to you by you know, clicking this button and invoking the, um, the referees to basically retrieve your file. And this is it, basically. Super cool. I know a lot of people are excited to play around with this. So um, if there's a, a place where people can get involved, please, please drop some, uh, some links somewhere so that we can uh, can follow along. Looks really I mean, interesting. In the former slide, there are all the links of all the projects that I mentioned. So you will also find the ones for Tribability. Awesome. Thank you. Marco for Consensus Lab. Yeah, so this is a busy slide because we haven't spoken in a, in a while and we grew a lot. So we are like 15 people, 10 LTCs, five part-time people, two advisors, three interns, and our hiring pipeline is still going on. Uh, we shipped a consensus factory event where we had the Cardano, Ethereum uh, Foundation, Cosmos Informal System, us and Algorand discussing scalability of consensus. This was a very interesting event. Consensus Day is coming about. We have 25 really high quality submissions. We are present in like a lot of uh, uh, PCs for different conferences, awarded two grants. And if you want to track our progress in demos, we are present in each and every matter of all demo days, like monthly. On the roadmap, we are focusing, well, we have different projects, but we're focusing on three, right? So hierarchical consensus is our lighthouse project. So uh, progress since the last time, we have one of the two key actors, the submit coordinator actor now as FVM built-in actor, so using M1. Uh, we have an implementation of an FVM of Atomic Cross Subnet Transaction Protocol. We have published uh, a hierarchical consensus specification. We have a pre fit discussion on this. What's ongoing, so this is shipped. Uh, what's ongoing is uh, we are working on hierarchical consensus MVP in Forest, so not only in Udico and Lotus, right? So we are working in Rust, uh, hierarchical consensus in Rust. And we're working on testnet infra deployment and monitoring and dashboard. So this is ongoing. 
On the second project, this is uh, uh, we're focusing on. This is efficient consensus for submits. We are on track for delivering MVP end of August. And then we have a third project on which there is a lot of resources, uh, which are improvements to Falcon expected consensus. In part, we're working on, with CryptoNet on this, and there are several research vectors. So attack analysis, improvements to current expected consensus, security proofs of the current expected consensus, but also exploring EC alternatives. So we plan to wrap up this around mid-October uh, with progressive milestones being shipped. Different highlights, well, we have two lab members getting married. I guess they're happy with the work in the group so they can focus on also on private life a bit. And we welcome three LTCs, so Akos, Wilson, Guy, they're all focusing on hierarchical consensus. So there we are basically uh, strengthening the hierarchical consensus team, but we also have three summary interns. So Jan is working on WebAssembly concurrent executions. Andre is working on Y3 project efficient consensus, and Shrechal is helping us with Y4, which had already introduced. For all stuff that we do, so we do everything in open like, like other lovers, but go to consensuslab.world. So this is our new landing page, and it will take you, uh, which we deployed recently, and it will take you to all stuff uh, consensus lab. Uh, we had a team week in Belgrade detailing the roadmap for the next, uh, for the second half of the year, a few invited talks, papers, and so on. Uh, the opportunities things, we had a presentation of hierarchy consensus here, IPFS thing, bootstrapping the discussions on HC use cases for content routing. Uh, a few, some, few uninvited opportunities, right? So people approached us from uh, Sonar, which who want to bring Falcon ecosystem closer to the Cosmos one, and they're trying to see if they can leverage hierarchical consensus. And basically, we are planning a bigger stakeholder call around deployment strategies for HC and few talks around Lisbon Crypto Week and Lab Week. This is still in the, in the like coming soon. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Great progress here. Um, and congrats for continuing to stay on timeline and roadmap. Over to David for Computer for Data. Uh, hey, everyone. Um, uh, it's been a couple of uh, sessions, and I'm really excited to present the progress. Um, uh, we, you know, it's, it's crazy. We wrote our first line of code in February. Uh, and then uh, threw it all out after our proof of concept time. And, and so really what you're looking at is everything here happening from April. Um, we've hit our first three roadmap updates. Um, as of right now, we're handling uh, multi-sector data sets. Um, uh, we currently are testing against one terabyte data sets uh, and are simulating um, 10,000 nodes, uh, uh, which you can come look at all our videos and see exactly what's going on. Um, and we are on track. Uh, this month, we're going to be adding uh, Filecoin integration, uh, 10,000 file jobs, and long-running jobs, including uh, those that cross uh, node restarts, uh, joining and leaving the network, and so on and so forth. Um, all the large jobs are using standard IPLD and um, Merkle tree um, uh, storage of the data, so uh, everything flows uh, directly back in and is uh, native. Uh, you can see there are target launch metrics. Um, that we wrote down uh, when we finished uh, compute over day to day in April, uh, and we're green. We've already achieved uh, four out of the uh, eight, nine, excuse me. Um, one is in yellow, uh, the 10,000 node job. <laughs> you wouldn't want to submit a 10,000 node job. It works, but it takes a very long time. Uh, so uh, I'm only giving that a yellow. Um, the other thing that's really spinning up there is the computer over data, uh, computer over data activity. Uh, we've launched the Computer Over Data Working Group, um, already have uh, 11 uh, org member projects who have joined and are presenting, um, uh, who will also be presenting at the Computer Over Data Day in uh, November. We'll, uh, Wes will be talking about that momentarily. Um, and then also three uh, Computer Over Data networks running against IPFS and Filecoin. Um, uh, so that's the big thing there. Um, keeping us on time, uh, you can see the uh, Computer Over Data Working Group is uh, uh, in the highlights has uh, scaled uh, faster than expected, so I'm really pleased about that. Lots of real world use cases, you can see all of them there. Um, uh, and our team is continuing to scale up. We have uh, seven total people, three more in the funnel um, that we're really excited about. Uh, if you have workloads, internal, external, you name it, large data, we want to test our API, our usage, our scale against your stuff. Um, don't care, whatever it is, uh, if you wanna run compute against your data, uh, we're there. Uh, Wasm support, if you ever wanted to try Wasm as an executor against 
uh, stuff stored on IPFS, um, we support that right now. So you can support, submit a Python job. We cross compile it into Wasm and you can execute. Uh, no understanding node, no understanding JavaScript. We do it for you. So um, if you want to give that a shot, you're more than welcome. Um, and please do come participate in the Computer for Data Working Group. Every two weeks, uh, we get together and talk about stuff. Um, and with that, that's a wonderful opportunity. Let me hand it over to um, uh, Wes, who will talk a little bit about that in the next slide. Awesome. That brings us into our spotlights, and I believe this is first. So, Wes, take it away. Yes, thank you so much. We're happy to announce that the Computer Over Data Working Group is launched. We've had our third meeting. All this information is available on cod.cloud as well as the YouTube page. Uh, the, the purposes behind the working group are to create a space for collaboration. There are many different teams in addition to Baco Yao that are trying to solve this problem of Computer Over Data. Increase awareness, marketing, go to market, because these projects, some of them are younger and they're attracting users and VC interest. And then also to foster collaboration. There are often shared standards between different computer over data projects, and we we'll want to really invest and support those, uh, those shared standards. We do have this upcoming uh, second round of our computer over data summit. It's going to be Lisbon, November 2nd through 3rd. We very much encourage you to pencil in the dates. We'd love to have your attendance. Also, please jump into the Slack channel if you'd like to stay up to date on uh, the developments there. Um, and the next big ask is if you know of any computer over data projects that are not part of the community yet, please do send them our way. We do want to grow the community. It's a big, uh, it's a big ecosystem out there. So we're always looking to, uh, to, add, to add folks who are trying to solve these problems. And uh, again, big thank you to Patrick and the Retrieval Working Group for all their help getting this started. Uh, they definitely paved the way for us. So that's all we have for today. Thank you very much. Awesome. Over to Anscar for Saturn. Good morning, all you beautiful people. So Saturn is Filecoin's content delivery network. Our mission every day, every single day, is to make Filecoin fast. So we got a lot of progress to report. While the network is still in testing, it has been growing, growing, growing. We are now 44 points of presence globally. That means L1 nodes. These are nodes running in data centers that end users will talk to first. And we have been loading those nodes. So we're now pushing over 80 terabytes and 120 million requests a day. And if that sounds familiar, that's our target. Our initial target is the IPFS gateway network load. So that's the same load. And how are we doing performance wise of that load? We are 800 milliseconds faster at 95th percentile time to first byte than the IPFS gateway. You can see a little graph of that in the upper right. And we're twice as fast as the IPS gateway at the 50th percentile. And the L2 nodes, this is like the next step in the network. So L1s will cache miss the L2s. L2s will run on you can use your desktops and station. You'll hear about station from Julian shortly. And L2s will cache miss the IPS network and storage providers. That's forthcoming. Now, what's in the pipeline? What are we, what's on our menu next? We want to continue to improve the time to first byte faster, faster, faster. We want to integrate with the IPS gateway and see how we can bring Saturn to the existing kind of production load with the IPS gateway. And thereafter, we are aiming for a public L1 launch. That means anyone, your friends, your family, your mother, your dog can go run an L1 node in Saturn's network, contribute to that network and be remunerated in Filecoin for their contributions. And we'd love for you to join in on our little party. You can come jump in in Filecoin Saturn channel on Filecoin Slack, check out the orchestrator, which is a piece of software that monitors the whole network, monitor our progress on GitHub. And then a huge shout out to the best little team at Protocol Labs, the Saturn team, let's keep cranking. And that's it. Woohoo, awesome. And now the other part of that station, Julian. Hey, I'm Julian. I'm part of the Filecoin Station project. And so we're building a desktop app for the Filecoin network, which uh, actually spun out of the Saturn project. For users, this means that everyone can participate in the network by running the app and everyone can earn Filecoin by doing so. And it should be easy to install and run so that we can just grow the network as much as possible. And so that, um, yeah, you basically shouldn't even notice it's running. For developers, a station is a deployment target. Um, the first module that will be deployed to station is the Saturn L2 which adds um, edge caching. In the future, there's going to be a lot of computer over data um, use cases, which can be very interesting and whatever else you can think of. So we're building this as a open platform 
Right. And an open platform obviously also needs a good security model. We are um, still working on that. We might use IPVM. And yeah, the platform will also handle a resource allocation for you so that module authors can focus on their actual business logic and don't need to be concerned with um, you know, using people's machines too much. Um, if you have um, questions or ideas, please uh, join our Slack. Thanks. Awesome. Jesse, quick update on NetOps Summit. Hey, okay, Jesse again. <laughs> so uh, last month, uh, we go into the uh, Iceland with the IPFS thing together uh, to our NetOps Summit. Uh, we go have a lot of uh, planning and knowledge sharing, uh, which you can see the list in here. Uh, we will slowly sharing uh, with the community what we're going to do. And I think today the data team will share a little bit about what the plan we're going to do in the data platform. Uh, you can see we have a lot of topic in there. Um, um, also, we travel, um, going to the biking, mountain biking. It is pretty nice, uh, very beautiful country and a lot of activity. Uh, so that's a kind of a highlight from our NetOps Summit. Um, if you're interested on any uh, what we are doing here or want to join us for the next uh, NetOps Summit, please let us know. Uh, we also have a hiring page in here. If you want to do something with us, please reach out. Awesome. Thank you. We have a couple more and then on to deep dives. CryptoEcon Lab, Ishan. Uh, awesome. So we had a very successful Crypto Econ Day in Paris. We had over 300 um, registrations and over 100 people attend. So um, I think that was our biggest one yet. Uh, we've been branching out to more non-PL speakers. I think our, our ratio at uh, Paris was 50% from outside PL and 50% inside PL. Um, and uh, you can see the links for the on our on Crypto Econ Day website. We, we keep all the talks there. So if anybody wants to watch them they're there we've also had uh two new team members join um uh juan pablo he uh joined um uh, in paris and sham is joining part-time in next week and then full-time in september some upcoming things uh, we have a new crypto econ website uh, that dave is working on uh, and then we have crypto econ days in singapore bogota and lisbon so if you guys are interested please register and come to our events i think um, they're going to be uh, they're going to be great and Dave has done a great job of, of finding new uh, people to give talks at each of the events and then some ongoing projects so um, we're working on the sector duration FIP uh, which I think is pretty well known and and Tom and Vic have been doing a great job there Saturn aliens um, we just started working on doing some gas modeling hierarchical consensus and then um, project atlas uh, and then we are also looking to hire a couple of research scientists and three to four software engineers so if you know anyone who's interested in um, working on this type of uh, projects, please give me, um, please ping me and I will reach out. Awesome. Great, well, IPFS thing, Steve. Yeah, awesome. This happened earlier here or last month in July in Iceland. There's been different mentions to it, but yeah, we got around 80 folks, 30 different projects represented, 12 different tracks you can see. Uh, a lot of recorded video from this uh, that'll be going live early next week. Um, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but you know, emphasis on multiple areas, certainly the implement various implementations and experimentation. Uh, we talked about the spec improvement process and kind of as soon as that got lit up, like we immediately had people engaging with it, uh, which is great to see. Uh, and I think a real highlight for me was to see that there was a lot of orgs outside of protocol labs really working together in a networked fashion. Uh, you know, the IPFS and WASM track, you know, kind of birthed the interplanetary virtual machine working group. So you can join that on Discord and, and Filecoin Slack. Uh, and similarly, the Content Addressable Alliance working group has gotten started with that, you know, that advocates and promotes the usage of content, content addressing in different places. Um, so good, good stuff there. There's, you know, more coming here in terms of recap blog posts. Uh, right after this call, there's actually a biweekly implementer sync uh, to carry on some of the conversation. And we're going to be uh, creating a monthly builder sync as well. And uh, for folks to be aware of, IPFS camp will be coming uh, where we'll gather the whole community. Uh, and details on that will be shared in the IPFS.tech blog and the IPFS newsletter as soon as we have it. But thanks all for those involved. Good times. Awesome. Um, over to A North to tell us about network version 17. Uh, hi there. So uh, Filecoin uh, Network goes through uh, a few upgrades each year where we upgrade the L1 uh, protocol. The last one uh, launched on the 6th of July, uh, which brought some great new stuff in particular, enabling the FVM as the uh, the canonical VM uh, on the network. Uh, while the FVM are working on user programmability, our next step is to launch a bunch of upgrades to the built-in actors and the built-in uh, protocol uh, so that when people can write their own uh, contracts and actors, they can do cool things. 
Uh, so the, yeah, the main theme of this is, is to support support utility for user programmed uh, things. So there's a bunch of um, uh, new capabilities and a bunch of refactoring to, to make things uh, play more nicely. Um, this is all in a, in a big effort towards programmable storage, which is sort of the dream for Filecoin where um, Filecoin, your know, network stores your data and then you can write applications on top of Filecoin uh, as uh, smart contracts or actors um, that can do stuff with that storage. So broker deals, uh, retrieve that data, compute over it, uh, do all kinds of automated replication and renewal and the kind of things that people expect to be built into the protocol, um, but are actually uh, not. Um, uh, and also all of the finance on top of the storage uh, that um, uh, you know, sets up the economic incentives for a robust uh, both supply and demand of storage. So there's a big set of proposals that are uh, in scope for this uh, network 17. Um, most of these have been in discussion for a long time. I'm, just, I'm not going to talk through each one here, uh, but there's a large set associated with uh, uh, the programmability of the finance or the programmability of uh, doing deals or the programmability of the storage uh, that will enable better capabilities for uh, user programmed contracts uh, when they're enabled. Um, we're not necessarily going to get everything that we'd like uh, into this uh, upgrade. So there's a, you know, the, the edge of the scope here um, is just being negotiated amongst the, um, the core devs community uh, at the moment. Um, and there's also a set of a small set of proposals at around sort of uh, network policy. And so the biggest one here is the um, uh, changing the uh, reward distribution uh, to incentivize longer term sectors and, and stabilize the storage provider rewards. Um, and associated with that, uh, there is a, an opportunity to clarify uh, network's policy. Um, should they ever should we ever discover flaws in the uh, cryptographic security of our proof of replication? Um, uh, this is a thing where we want to discuss upfront what kind of policy the network would take, so that storage providers have some predictability over their returns and what risk they're taking when they make really really long term commitments um, uh, to their sectors. Uh, we're already a fair way through implementation for these proposals. Um, some of these are being built by teams outside of Protocol Labs, which is which is fantastic, and I think we want to continue to expand. So there's a couple of uh, you know, the formal the formal FIPS for some of these uh, are still being written, but the plans are, are well known. In some cases, we do the implementation at the same time as the proposal because the implementation tells us a lot about uh, you know we learn things from writing the code uh, that then form part of the spec. Uh, but we're well on track for this, uh, and so. Upcoming uh, work here is the governance process for these uh, FIPS that are not yet approved, uh, needs to work through. Um, and then ongoing implementation down uh, down a few streams. Uh, the CryptoNet team and the Lotus team are all lined up behind all of these uh, items. Um, so that we can have aiming to you know, write, finish writing all the code in the next month or so, uh, and then start winding up the network upgrade process uh, that works through your test nets and, and integration and so on. Uh, towards an next network upgrade, which will be sometime, you know, uh, sometime October-ish uh, this year. Awesome. Thank you, Alex. Um, over to Steph for our data update. Hi. Just a short update regarding uh, the work that we've been doing at Data. Um, our biggest goal for Q3 is to make Falcon Chain data fully uh, queryable. What's that mean? Um, today, uh, historical chain data is an S3 bucket. It's an S3 bucket called Fill Archive, and they are... Um, represented as CSVs, and these CSVs are transformed into parquet files, which can then be queried with a Athena query engine. However, this usually lags by uh, one to two weeks, and the current data lives on timescale DB. So this makes it really hard to query um, data from, for example, like today uh, to three months ago, plus stitch it with data that you might need for, let's say, like up to Genesis. Obviously, we want to make it easy to do analysis not just for now to three months ago, but from now all the way to Genesis. So how are we going to do that? Uh, we are going to unify the historical chain data and current data into one data warehouse. And we've chosen BigQuery because it has the least uh, overhead when it comes to operations. You can read their proposal in Notion uh, if you want more background and context on why we ended up choosing, on why we ended up using BigQuery in the end. Uh, progress so far, uh, we now have a big query project with a historical chain data from the um, S3 bucket. So we just simply um, ingested those CSVs into big query, but that won't be the um, that won't be the longer term solution. We simply wanted to do that because we wanted to do data modeling with DBT, which David has worked on, um, so that transformations will be easier. It's version controlled. Transformations also happen in the same data store that the transformed data live in. So it will be much easier for us to model and massage the data to however we need and based on feedback 
as well. So we can iteratively improve the data model as we learn more about um, the needs of our users. If you want to test out BigQuery chain data, uh, you can do so on SciSense or Grafana um, if you choose the temp underscore BQ data source. So you can, if you look on the screenshot down here, that's how you would choose it as a data source in Grafana. And you can do the same for Periscope as well. Um, another exciting news is we have data infrastructure as code um, deployed and as well as Argo workflows. Um, what this means is that we can lean into using uh, the containers that have already been created for us by the rest of the uh, PL network to create our data pipelines instead of having to write programming uh, like uh, language bindings, which is what was being done previously, where we had to write language bindings um, in Python for Lily. Um, obviously, that's more code means more maintenance, and for a very small team of two, uh, I think we just wanted to try and uh, make our pipelines and workflows as clean as possible and as language agnostic as possible. So what, what's next? Uh, we will be re reprocessing the Falcon chain to address issues in existing CSPs. Um, we will also be doing more data modeling. That's going to be tomorrow at 11 a.m. with um, myself and David. If you want to join, just feel free to ping us on Slack. And we will also be setting up existing Falcon pipelines to have BigQuery as a destination. So this is also a nice side effect of moving from Redshift to BigQuery is that because BigQuery is also a data warehouse, we can use it to store uh, business, um, other business uh, relevant data as well, uh, because this was another uh, set of issues that we had where people would come to me and ask, hey, why can't I uh, do exploratory data analysis with, let's say, data from GitHub and try and find some correlations with Falcon chain data. Um, that was really difficult before and uh, with BigQuery that with migrating all of the data into BigQuery, uh, we hope to address this issue. Um, we will also be adding some data validation and testing with DBT as well. Um, yeah, if you're interested in any of the work that we're doing, uh, reach out to us on Phil Sentinel or ping us at Sentinel Data on Filecoin Slack. If you would like to learn more about how to use BigQuery with Grafana or Periscope, just let us know as well and we'll try and get you bootstrap. That's it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Seth. And definitely think some docs and or tutorials on how others can, can self-serve off that will be super useful as well. Cool. Well, that brings us to the end of our time. Unfortunately, we're out of time for Q&A, but thank you all so much for an awesome end res all hands and for the great deep dives um, and see you all next month. Cheers, everybody.